To go along with active listening, another incredibly important interpersonal communication practice is what's called active support. Um, active listening is one way of creating a supportive interpersonal relationship, but being a better partner is also a matter of having, um, uh, uh, being able to show support not just by being a listener, so being able to more proactively demonstrate your support of your partner. Um, there are two basic forms of active supports. One's called antecedent, the other is called consequent. Those names are, are not that important. But if you've ever said to someone, you know, I know how you feel about this, someone really skilled at interpersonal communication know that that's, knows that that's not enough. It's a little tiny marker of support, but it's not really active support because it's a relatively thin way of showing your support for someone. So antecedent support requires an active and concerned method of letting the other partner be and accepting the other partner as they are. Uh, this is not the same thing as apathy. It means that we give our partner the psychosocial space to be himself or herself as much as possible. It's not that we don't care what the other is like, but that we actively support the other's difference. Uh, another way of putting this is to say that we recognize our partner as valuable because of their difference from us, and we actively support that difference. And that support needs to be expressed in various ways, and it needs to be made explicit. So, and again, this is not the same as approval. To accept someone as they are, uh, as they are in different form, uh, is, in different from approving, is different from approving their actions. Um, so essentially one displays antecedent support to the extent that one is able to communicate one's psychological availability to one's partner. I'm here to listen to you or I'm here to witness this part of your life. Um, the ability to display genuine involvement with and concern for the other is the best way to manifest antecedent support. Oftentimes we also reward our partners with positive communication to reinforce a behavior and promote continued, the continued use of that particular behavior. This is called consequent support. I'm trying to encourage a specific communicative practice and keep that practice going. The experimental research on the effectiveness of rewards suggests strongly that the timing of the reward, reward is critical. So um, in interpersonal interactions, this means that consequent support requires that we explicitly and immediately respond positively to a specific practice that we want to encourage. It shouldn't be over the top, our response, but it should be proportionate to the kind of thing we're trying to encourage. If someone tells an intimate story and we respond with an even more intimate story, then it may seem more like we are playing a game of one-upmanship, and we don't want to do that. An appropriate response explicitly recognizes the behavior or practice being supported and uses the appropriate degree of support to encourage more of that behavior. Um, so I can use an example here. If someone tells me a story, I can say, thanks for that story. I really appreciate you sharing that with me. It reminds me of a similar story in which I did X. The similar story wouldn't trump my partner's story, but would add to it. So you want to explicitly identify a behavior or practice to support. Don't, don't judge, criticize, or ass assess that behavior, but say you appreciate it or that it's helpful. Uh, Active support is often juxtaposed with what's called defensive behavior, which can be thought of as the opposite of active support. An evaluative message judges the other person, usually in a negative way. And it's most often the result of some defensive spiral on the part of the person making the evaluation. So for example, if I were to say, you're not making any sense, um, but a descript uh, that's a, a defensive statement. A descriptive statement is, I don't quite understand the point you're trying to make. The first is defensive, the second is supportive. So you want to avoid defensive communication practices. The defensive partner is trying to be controlling instead of focusing on problems. And controlling behavior occurs when one partner tries to impose his or her own needs or interests on the other partner. So we want to avoid defensive communication practices that rely on evaluation, control, strategy, superiority, and certainty. And instead, we should be focused on supportive communication practices that rely on description, problem orientation, equality, and provisionality. So when your communication practices are do those things instead of the defensive things, we're going to be good at producing active support.